Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ramadan kini tiba lagi. Tapi kali ini Ramadan disambut dengan suasana yang berbeza disebabkan COVID-19. Banyak kebiasaan yang menjadi tradisi kita tidak dapat dilakukan tahun ini. Tetapi itu tidak menghalang kita dari terus ke hadapan dari mencari rezeki ataupun beribadat. Dengan teknologi digital, kita masih boleh berhubung walaupun tidak seperti biasa dan berdoa wabak COVID-19 ini berakhir dalam masa terdekat. Ramadan ni, Ramadan bukan biasa. Ramadan ni, Ramadan luar biasa.
Ramadan luar biasa. Hey guys, good morning. It's me again and welcome to eDagang Expo hashtag EDX organized by Malaysia Digital Economy Corporation MDAC and supported by Ministry of Communication and Multimedia. Running from 4th of May to 8th of May, today we are on the third day of eDagang Expo. And as usual, we are going to have four webinar sessions today, starting from 10.30 a.m. until 4.30 a.m. And all these webinars are intended to encourage our local businesses to sell online. For more details on eDagang Expo and to those who would like to register our webinars, do visit our website at www.go-ecommerce.my. And before I forget, those who are watching us from Facebook Live, please share our video, tag your friend, so that more people can benefit from these sessions, okay? All right, today we are going to start our day with a panel session with topic export transformation go digital and later on we are going to have a session from shopline carousel and also caiq in full sentence chinese academy of inspection and quarantine if time permits we will answer some of your questions towards the end of the sessions so if you have any questions please type them at the q a section or the comment section all right now let me introduce you to the moderator for the panelist sessions for today, Mr. Yo Seng Hui from Small and Medium Enterprises Association, Samenta. He has more than 30 years of senior management and executive board experience in a variety of industries such as manufacturing, construction, property development, publishing, venture capital and even a non-profit industry association currently he runs a boutique consultancy that provides financial and strategic advisory services to sme hello mr yo good morning hello mr. good morning yo. june selamat pagi. Yeah. selamat pagi yeah how are you today mr yo I'm fine. Uh, it's, it's a nice and gorgeous morning. Uh, yes. Bright sunshine in Penang. <laughs> oh, in Penang. Okay, okay. Great. Awesome. So, are you ready to start our session today? Yes, definitely. I think without further ado, uh, we'll, yeah. we'll kick it off right away. Yeah. All yeah. right. Hand over to you. Okay. Thank you, June. Yeah. So, uh, let me first introduce, uh, well, the, uh, the, the panel of speakers. Uh, and like I said, uh, Selamat pagi, good morning to all of you who are attending this uh, session with us. So can I call upon the uh, panelists to, to basically uh, turn, on their, turn on their videos? Yeah. Okay, we've got, uh, you know, can the rest of the panelists please turn on your videos as well? Yeah. We've got Stephanie, who is uh, from Sakido. She's going to be one of our panelists. We have uh, Pamela Poe from Everest, who is also the other panelist. And then finally, we have uh, Marvin Yi. So we are, as you can see, we are dominated by, by ladies here in this panel. You know, we've got two thirds of our panel being uh, ladies. Okay? So, so we, have, we have ticked all the boxes when it comes to, uh, you know, gender equality, I guess. It's more than equal, yeah. Okay, okay let me just uh, first start off uh, you know, with a, with a quick introduction of uh, who Samantha is, and then we'll go straight into the uh, the panel discussion. Uh, Samantha is you know stands for the Small and Medium Enterprises Association. We were actually the the first SME trade association. Uh, we started in 1986. Uh, and like many of the uh, trade associations, uh, 
Our objective is to promote and develop SMEs. Uh, we organize uh, business matches, trade fairs, etc. We represent SMEs in dialogues with, with government uh, bodies. And recently during the MCO, we actually uh, just conducted a, a survey to, to determine the impact of MCO on SMEs. But more important in line with the, with the theme of, uh, of MDAC, which is basically uh, going digital and promoting e-commerce, we have just, uh, Samantha has just launched a B2B uh, uh, platform called Samantha Online. You know, you'll hear a lot about it uh, later on. Uh, maybe one of the panelists will talk about it, but you can check it out. Go to www.samantha online. You can see that uh, in my virtual backdrop as well, if I move a bit, yeah. Okay, uh, so okay, and we will, We also, as far as Samantha is concerned, we also handle uh, a promotion of cross-border trade when we try to encourage SMEs to go beyond the domestic market. Because as we know, the Malaysian market is relatively small with a population of about 33 million. So, so if we want to increase our, our, our market or expand and diversify, we, we should consider the export uh, market, yeah. And, and it just in terms of statistics, I mean, SMEs only contribute about 17% to our total export. So I think uh, there's still plenty of room in line with the SME master plan. So it's, it's important for SMEs to start planning, start preparing themselves to embark on an export marketing strategy. Okay, so today our panel, our panelists will, will cover the following topics. They will they'll be talking about uh, uh, how to export and the challenges face uh, in terms of exporting. They will also talk about leveraging the B2B platform to go digital. And finally, uh, we'll also talk about the uh, a digital, uh, fully integrated logistics platform, okay? Okay, let's, let's proceed with uh, our first, uh, first speaker on the panel. Uh, so can, we'll introduce Stephanie. Stephanie Te is the executive director of uh, Sekido, which is a technology company specializing in uh, product vending network storage systems, uh, materials and product supplies to uh, to E and E industries, um, and also in automotive building and uh, other types of industries. They have offices in Penang, factory in KL, Johor, and they're certified uh, uh, for ISO 9001 2015. So let me hand start the, uh, the session with, uh, with Stephanie and uh, so that we can kick off the uh, program for this morning, okay? How are you this morning, Stephanie? Good morning to everyone. Good morning to you, Pamela, Marvin, and the uh, MDEX, uh, June, Prasas, and uh, Kelvin, yeah. Okay, uh, okay. Stephanie, and uh, this is an export, right? So I will cover a few uh, greeting in the morning. Ohio Gozaimas, Luster Morgan. Good morning. Sao <laughs> An. Go away. Okay, that's Sao good. An. That's good. Okay. Yeah, she's multilingual, which is typical of an exporter because you'll be dealing with people from different cultures here. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, Stephanie, since, uh, you know, like, uh, you would like to hear, or, the, or maybe the audience would also like to hear, like, uh, mm -hmm. since you've been exporting for many years, first thing is, like, tell us about your export experience in terms mm -hmm. of uh, B2B. You know, like how long have you been exporting, you know, and, and uh, what are the issues that you've, you've faced in, in, in the course of exporting? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Skido Technology Syndrome Bahad as well is uh, established in the year 2004 and uh, uh, it's about 16 years. Then uh, we have been exporting for to uh, many countries, just a list out a few, Vietnam, Japan, Thailand, Indonesia, Germany, US, uh, partly ch uh, China. So, uh, the problem that we are facing actually right now is a lesser, but uh, I can share some information that is uh, very crucial for now. Is uh, uh, for my experience that uh, we must use the uh, good forwarder. Okay, for example, you are using the international forwarder. Okay, so let's say uh, you are using the uh, a same company, but uh, they are using the. Uh, also, they have the same company, like uh, a, a company, they do not appoint any agent or any uh, in uh, overseas. So your clearance will be very fast and very good and the information you will get it very on time. Okay, so example, like you go to Japan, this uh, high-tech country, advanced country, no doubt, no issue at all. But uh, you go to Vietnam, so some like uh, uh, people's uh, clearance location, you are unknown. 
uh, I'm talking about sea shipment, okay? Air shipment is no problem at all for the export, okay? So, uh, like Vietnam, we are having the uh, mm, shipment start, okay? Then, uh, where is the shipment? Then, the location, the communication, why also language different? Then, um, a, a lot of like uh, the disconnection uh, over there. So, for me, forwarder is very important, okay? Okay, so. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks. Uh what about in terms of uh, looking for new markets? You know, where do you start? Let's say if I'm a, a local, locally based SME, and if I want to start uh, to explore the uh, international markets, where do I start and how do I start? Maybe you can share with us some of your experience. Yeah. Our people go to Indonesia, Vietnam. Mm -hmm. So for our SME, because why first, they are really, um, to us is closer, okay? Then uh, third, maybe we can consider Cambodia, okay? So uh, actually we are now penetrating, actually already started in uh, Indonesia and Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So of course, the, you, let's say you want to do exporting, right? So I also mentioned that uh, you can use our B2B platform, it's easier. Actually, okay. by right, uh, before we go to uh, uh, this uh, Samantha online, actually my website are ready for B2B. You all can log in and take a look, www.sakido.com.my. Okay, so from there, actually, we have a lot of inquiry during the MCO or before the MCO. Uh, I started the trial run on uh, last year, November until January. I see we have a lot of uh, overseas inquiry okay. through our website. Okay, okay, good, yeah. So, like, you know, uh, I think uh, what Stephanie says is, is very relevant. Uh, I think first thing is, like, my, my contention, because I've been involved in the, in the export uh, trade uh, since the... Uh, I would say the early 90s. So, so I, I, I've been participating in a lot of trade fairs as well in the past and all things. So I think like what Stephanie says is uh, you have to know, know your products and know your customers, KYP and KYC. I always tell SMEs that uh, if, if you, for example, are basically a proton, then you should be looking for customers that are looking for so-called protons. You know? Don't try to, to sell in the Mercedes or the BM market because you have, to, you have to see which kinds of countries are suitable for your products. Yeah, correct, uh, uh, Stephanie? I mean, you know, so that, exactly. so that your chances of success will be better uh, because exporting is actually a, a very expensive uh, so-called exercise uh, unless you consider the digital platform because maybe, maybe you want to tell us a bit more of like say the trade fairs, that, the so-called physical trade fairs that you've attended in the past, you know, like uh, and how much it costs to participate in the trade fair of that nature. Although Martrade also gives uh, some grants to support the exporters through MDG. Maybe you want to share with us here. In early stage like 2000, we went to uh, CPCA China, HPCA Hong Kong. We went to uh, Metatech. Now Metatech is also very famous. Then uh, we are uh, also taking part for method by about four years continuous. Then in the early stage, we also joined the in-trade. I don't know, uh, some of them are looking for in-trade, okay? So we also take part in India, the rubber trade show, uh, with, uh, together with NREPC, thank you so much. Then uh, also, the, uh, lately, I uh, took my self-initiative. I joined the ITAP Singapore, okay? I also joined the RISE Hong Kong for technology platform, okay? So these are the experience, how long I'm staying there so far that for exhibition, I won't rushing back, okay? So my staff, they could back and rush back for their job preparation, inquiry, answer it. But for me, I will stay for extra two days, okay? So I will attend to customer, listen to them. Uh, mm. Although you think that it's crucial, important, you need to grab them immediately. True, true. Okay, so the, um, for the trade fair wise, in the early stage, we go India, it's really very good. Uh, leading by MREPC, okay? So metal tech is more on metal. Then uh, we also selling some raw material in every stage like the PCB raw material, okay? Then the uh, sheet metal raw material, okay? So uh, for the interest is more on trading. So consumer trading, okay? Then uh, engineering part tradings, then a spare part tradings. So uh, some of the manufacturer you yeah, easily can find and the measurement tool supplier are there, okay? Mm. So for the CPCA and HKCPA, is more on PCB material. You know, mm. the PCB design and PCB makers fabrication all are very well known and established in Hong Kong and China. Okay, so they okay. are there. Okay, so good. The, the, uh, we joined last year, we, I joined the uh, yeah. uh, technologies uh, exhibition, it's more on 
towards yeah. digitalization. Okay. So I think uh, as we can see, you actually uh, have participated in a lot of uh, trade fairs uh, in different countries, right? Uh, my, my, my next uh, question to you would be like, because I mean, I, I've, like I said, I've been involved in, uh, in, uh, in the export trade for a long time. It's actually quite an expensive affair to participate in trade fairs, even with uh, so-called uh, subsidy or grants from MDEC. Uh, normally, like, you know, uh, how much do you spend for, for each particular trade fair? I mean, all in, you know, for example, which, which involves uh, your, your registration fee or participation fee plus accommodation. I mean, just an average figure. We just want people to understand when we go digital, how much savings you can get actually, you know, in terms of the cost of it. Oh, Let's say you go to the uh, conventional uh, exhibition in Kuala Lumpur. Okay, no, so for, for an overseas trade fair, for example. Oh, overseas. Overseas. Yeah. overseas trade fair is about wow, it's about <laughs> 35k. But you can claim back the MDG, but also thanks to Matrix, the MDG. Okay, so uh, it's a claim back of so nearly half. Okay, so yeah. uh, you need to grab your sales close very fast. For us, we must close it within three months. Those are uh, mm -hmm. potential inquiry. So I am very excited and uh, keep following up non-stop okay, on the inquiry side. So you can, for SME, la, time is mm -hmm. crucial because a lot of sure. contact. Okay. Sure. So once you close it, you grab it easily, you can cover your mm, exhibitions, uh, traveling, uh, accommodation fee. Okay, mm -hmm. fantastic. Yeah. So, okay. Um, so the next question I want to, to ask you would be, uh, you know, uh, you have already, like what you, you mentioned earlier, I mean, you've participated in conventional uh, trade fairs, and you also have already uh, had some presence in, in a digital platform. So tell us about your experience about going digital, because, you know, like what we have uh, just, uh, you know, heard you mention, it's, it's, it's actually quite an expensive affair to participate in, in conventional uh, trade fairs, you know. Uh, but now that there are, there are digital platforms available, how do you think SMEs can plug into that particular channel? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, Sakido is a very lucky company. Okay, we got the uh, top uh, 20 uh, uh, digital uh, websites sign up with the MPC. Thank you so much, MPC, Dr. Sri Wong. Then uh, after that, because of this, we have set up our uh, um, digitalization platform. But in the digital platform, you must very clear mention on your products, items, the meta keyword, what you all laymen say is a Google search keyword, write as much as possible. Don't say about 10 or 20. You can think about 50, 100 is better. But this, you cannot do it in one week or one month. This will be that lead by the uh, business executive or business uh, leaders. Okay? So uh, after that, the, uh, you must write your price range. Okay? Because you know that when you go into a B2B platform, the... Uh, what we say is a buyer, we are seller. So the buyer were looking for, uh, it's different country, the requirement is different uh, uh, price uh, uh, requirement. So they also looking for different quality. Okay, mm. so for us, the price range you don't put so high and too low. This is the difficulty for SME, okay? So the price up there, you don't put too high and too so too 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 high, okay? So yeah. you must do your well on your homework before you right. uh, release this information to your programmer or uh, Samantha online. Mm -hmm. Else, you need to edit by yourself on the price minimum and maximum there. So this is what we can do in the okay. hmm, That's interesting, yeah. So I think, uh, you know, like what you're saying is that you have to, preparation is, is actually uh, more than half the battle won, you know. In I fact, want I thought, to cover up one thing that if let's say you are selling the uh, yes. machining parts, customization parts, okay. Okay? okay. So what can you do? Because my partner having another company for the uh, uh, machining company, so mm -hmm. uh, most of the time that the, all the metal parts, screw, reverts, uh, the rubbers, everything is come to exclusion, customized to the to the what we say mm, to the drawing. Okay, according mm. to the solid cat, solid work okay. and the AutoCAD drawing. What can do? Okay. You must write the yeah. uh, okay. the customization wise, you need to put a lot of sizes. But not in one photo. Okay? You need to put a lot of photo, different mm. photo, not the same photo, and you put the uh, different prices, different sizes. You let the uh, to let the uh, buyer view so many, many times. 
okay, then uh, the, okay. the important mm -hmm. is yeah. how to gain the market share. So to let the uh, buyer yeah. okay. view and to know you. This is the customization. Mm. Sure. Okay, thanks. Yeah, uh, so, you know, like, um, we, we have said uh, that it is it's important for SMEs to consider the digital platform. I think you have, you have testified to the, uh, to the benefits of, of, of uh, going onto the digital platform. As we all know, um, you know, especially in, in times like this, huh, uh, post-COVID, post huh, uh, there will be lesser face-to-face uh, -face interactions because conventional trade fairs actually uh, attract too many people. So I think for the next six months, you probably won't see too many uh, conventional trade fairs because I think people are still having some, some fears about flying long distances to be congregating in, in, a, in a place where there are thousands of people coming together. So I think the, the way forward is, is as we all uh, agree here, is that it's going to be digital. So can you, can you share with us, you know, how do you think, first thing is why do you think SMEs should consider a digital platform? for exports and, and the reasons and, and how to go about doing it, you know? Yeah. Okay, this one, I think I'm talking for the layman's uh, words, okay? <laughs> yeah. Yesterday, I'm talking to my friends, they were using a very uh, super words. They say, oh, you better talk in the layman for your tomorrow presentation. First thing, if you go digitization, mm, paperless. So paperless, what we do paper, so those A4 paper, printing, cost you will save it up. For SME, this is, to some of the bosses say, oh, this is a very small amount. To us, as you know, you can, you can just check out how much that you have procured the uh, A4 paper and ink and the uh, rental or photo stamp machine per year. Okay, first is the paperless. Second is the first com fast communication. Okay, it's the on-time, real-time communication. It's the important is we can work from home because the COVID's not yet finished. Okay, still ongoing. Okay, then why we need to go for uh, digitization, we call about e-commerce. You must go e-commerce, website, B2B, then you only can go digitization. There are two parts. Some of our people, they are always mis -com also confusing about what is digitization, what is uh, e-commerce. E-commerce is you put your products, you think it's the sellable, high profit, the margin products into the website, the B2B platform. At the back, you only can do your digitalization. They call ERP, MES, CRM. You put in into digitalization. Okay. So why we need to do e-commerce? Okay, digitalization because we are effective use in international market penetration. Now we cannot fly. Air Asia also cannot fly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so some of the example, some of the example, you can. Uh, Reference like a very famous one, very established, Alibaba and Amazon. Okay, so uh, another thing is that uh, we also provide this uh, digitization e-commerce. Huh? We also provide the opportunity to enterprises to widen our view for the international look and the international requirement. And we need to upgrade our Malaysian to the next level. So uh, this is, first thing, it's very important you can save down all your sales and marketing or your r and uh, expenses. This is uh, why we need to go okay. to exporting e-commerce. Then okay. the con side, con side, con side, of course you have pro and cons, right? Sure, sure. Yeah, go ahead. So, uh, the cons, yeah, we need to wrap up after your cons. Yeah. <laughs> some of the, the bosses want to listen pro and cons, okay? Yes, and yes. Majority yeah. for us also the same, okay? So uh, the con side, uh, you must very, very sensitive to your customer relationship. Your last time, oh, like one appointment. Oh, you have problem. Okay, I book ticket. I go to you tomorrow. This is called face to face. Okay, but right now we have no more. So now, but we thanks to Zoom, uh, we have Skype, we have a lot of uh, the panel. I saw Facebook. So uh, this uh, web also helping a lot. So the, you must keep good relation to your customer. Yeah. Okay. So another thing that is okay. also you, you got to you got to wrap up. You got to wrap up soon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also very. You got to uh, wrap up soon. Uh, yeah. uh, very very is a challenge to the SME for the sales transaction, uh, uh, increase. So you must have a very good system behind you. So SME, please invest the uh, mini ERP. This is the must. Okay. 
So if let's say you want the mini ERP, I can introduce to you or you go Samantha online, you type software digitization, it will come up. Okay, so uh, I hand over to you. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Stephanie, for, for this uh, very uh, uh, personal account uh, in terms of how to go about exporting. She has actually, uh, you know, uh, shared with us experiences, pros and cons, going digital, okay? So now that we've uh, heard from the first speaker in terms of her direct experience as an SME, let us go to the second, the second uh, speaker on a panel. She's uh, Pamela. Pamela Poe. Yeah, good morning, Pamela. Yeah. Yeah. Good morning, Pamela. Yeah. Okay. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Yeah. Thank you for joining us today. Okay. So, Pamela, let me just uh, introduce Pamela very briefly. Pamela is the co founder and CEO of Everest, which is a Malaysian uh, a B2B marketplace, which is, she'll explain to you a bit more about her, her business and, and uh, later on. It was founded in uh, the about uh, two, two plus years ago. And she's basically uh, someone who is, is very passionate about helping local SMEs uh, to, to promote their products, both locally as well as uh, internationally, okay? Okay, so let me just start off um, by asking uh, Pamela to, to proceed uh, with, you know, the, to, to share with us uh, about what Everest uh, B2B marketplace is and how can SMEs actually benefit uh, by being part of this platform? Yeah, over to yeah, you. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, so Everest is uh, Malaysia's uh, local B2B marketplace uh, that is specifically for Malaysian sellers only. So uh, the platform was launched uh, two years ago with the aim of connecting the B2B ecosystem in Malaysia so that Malaysian companies who are actually targeting business or corporate buyers, they can actually promote and sell their products or services online via our platform. So as for how the B2B marketplace concept can benefit SMEs is that first, uh, purchasers will be able to find products or services and compare between suppliers easier with just simple clicks. And also, if we were to be able to build a large ecosystem within the Everest platform, the chances of foreign buyer being interested in Malaysian sellers will be higher than if all SMEs were to run their own websites, you know, running their own Google Ads campaign, which will also be costly and probably not so effective as compared to having a marketplace. So a marketplace, take for example, a marketplace is actually a similar concept to like a trade exhibition, just that it is in digital form. Mm. Buyers normally prefer to shop or visit an exhibition with more choices rather than visiting a single store, right? So this is one of the benefits of a B2B marketplace. As to how Everest has benefited our SME sellers, uh, the platform has been in operation for about two years. 80% uh, of our sellers feedback that they do get business through our platform. Many of them actually got a lot of product views through our platform. Uh, we even have sellers who managed to get uh, five-figure to six-figure sales through our platform. So while people often uh, associate e-commerce with trading of small consumer items only, I'd like to share that, you know, many of our sellers are actually selling uh, large machinery and material handling equipment or even vehicles such as tractors through our platform. For example, we had a seller who sold a tractor that cost six figures through the sales lead that we generated for them. So okay. the key thing here is that, you know, anything, any type of products can be promoted online. Sure. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. I think that's, uh, you know, it's nice to hear that, uh, you know, Malaysia has its, uh, its own uh, country specific, uh, you know, B2B platform, which, which basically is targeted uh, for Malaysian sellers to connect with uh, both, of course, Malaysian buyers as well as uh, international buyers. Okay. My, my next question is, is like, um, tell us about, uh, you know, the, the pros and cons of exporting via a digital or e-commerce platform, you know? 
um, you know, like what what are the benefits and and what are the things to look out for the challenges? Yeah. All right, like what Stephanie mentioned just now, she actually started. Uh, she developed her own uh, website targeting B two B sellers, and from there she actually get a lot of inquiries in. So. I would say that one of the main pros of e-commerce is that it can give exporters a wider reach compared to, you know, you were to rely on traditional marketing channels. So when you post something online, basically you have the potential to reach anyone, anywhere. So also in the past, exporters usually attend overseas exhibitions to meet and connect the new potential customers, like what Stephanie shared just now. Uh, while this is a very effective marketing channel, this method may not be possible now when the global environment is pretty uncertain. Hence, e-commerce can be the digital tool to bridge this gap for now. Okay, so besides getting a wider reach, uh, going e-commerce also has the advantage in terms of cost. It is cheaper compared to participating in international trade fair. So due to this reason, Everest is in partnership with Samantha, whereby we have plans to implement a digital expo for SMEs in future. So via this, uh, via their platform that is known as Samantha Online, okay, we know that all the while Samantha has been actively participating in international trade fairs and business matching to promote their SMEs to potential buyers. And we know that this may not be possible now. So we hope that, you know, when we have thousands of SMEs on Samantha Online, uh, Everest and Samantha will be, you know, jointly organizing a digital expo for these SMEs. Yeah, I think, yes, um, just to add on, I think it's uh, definitely the case uh, when you talk about the, uh, the pros and cons, because like you mentioned about, about reach, you know, because if you have to go and participate in, in 10 trade fairs a year, it's going to cost you a bomb, right? <laughs> I mean, you know, especially for SMEs, you know, you don't have the kind of budget to participate. Normally, most SMEs only attend one or two maximum, you know, if it's overseas, right? you know, of course, if it's in Malaysia, it's, uh, it's cheaper. Unless but, you have very good skills in closing sales like Stephanie. You <laughs> yeah, true, 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 true. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's a relevant point as well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I think for most SMEs who are newbies, who are actually just starting out, uh, the digital platform gives you or uh, accords you with a lot of opportunities to target to target specific countries also because you can actually look at promoting your, your, your products or services digitally in certain markets, you know. And so that gives you a certain advantage. So you don't have to just, uh, you know, to go all over the world initially because you can, like what uh, Stephanie was saying, you know, identify those markets where you think you have some competitive advantage. Then your chances of success will be higher rather than just go on a, you know, a shotgun yeah. approach, you know, yeah. Yes. For your example, comments, please, yeah. Yeah, for example, like uh, all these SMEs, they can actually, you know, embark on B2B marketplace to actually have a, a testing, like to also uh, learn more about the market, like, you know, which market is actually interested in their products. Then like what you mentioned, Mr. Yo, then they can actually embark on, you know, going for a trade exhibition into that country. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. Okay. So like, you know, say... Um, I mean, we've heard about the benefits, right? I mean, like uh, the pros. I think think uh, many SMEs are fully aware of the pros. But like what uh, Stephanie says, we must also know what are the challenges, <laughs> the cons, as she says. So what are the, I, I won't say cons in this case, I would say the challenges, you know. So what are some of the challenges that would be faced by SMEs who would like to to embark on the, on the digital, uh, you know, export marketing strategy? Okay, uh, personally, I've been running uh, Everest for two years and I have engaged with hundreds of, you know, SME business owners. So, uh, based on my observation, the key challenge that SME face is that, you know, they don't know how to get started and they felt that, you know, there's just too much of work and things to learn. For example, like what Stephanie mentioned just now, you have to do your homework. Yeah. You know, don't expect that, you know, you just you know, bash on to a marketplace, B2, a B2B marketplace, and you will get, you know, sales, you know, customers from there. You yourself have to do your homework, study who are your competitors, what's the best pricing, what's your, what's the unique selling point of your product. Mm. 
So yeah, this is one of the, the preparation that you know SME might find that is very daunting for them. So for example, before you start promoting or selling your products or services online, you will also need to list or upload the products either on your e-commerce market store or a marketplace. And many of them find this very time consuming and not worth investing. Many of them also expect that, you know, the minute I post my product today, I can start getting business tomorrow. This is okay. <laughs> yeah, e-commerce is a journey, not a destination. So each postings will need to take some time before it can climb the Google SEO ranking, like what Stephanie mentioned just now. You have to put in your effort, you know, the meta tag, meta tag title, description, to be able to catch the eyes of the audience. So take those successful online sellers, for example, if you were to interview them, they will definitely tell you that, you know, it took them a lot of patience, time and dedication before sure. they start seeing any results. So like the saying goes, uh, no pain, no gain. Uh. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I like that, uh, that phrase, uh, it's, it's a journey and it's not a destination. I think, I think all of us will agree, uh, you know. To, to that uh, adage, yeah. Uh, okay, let's let's move on. It's like uh, maybe uh, one one last question. Um, you know, like you have the country specific marketplaces, which are like like yourself, and then you have of course the uh, the, the more general marketplaces. You know, uh, so what would be the advantage of of going on board, say, a, a country specific marketplace? Yeah. Okay, take, uh, while many of us are very familiar with international marketplaces like uh, eBay, Amazon, and Alibaba, right? In fact, uh, globally, a lot of nations are starting, uh, have been having their own nation-specific marketplaces for a long time, and it has been flourishing in many countries. So, for example, if you look at India, India has two big B2B marketplaces known as industry buying and in their mark, they're specifically for sellers from India only. Even if you want to join, they won't allow you to join. So India Mart was founded in 1996 and it is now a listed company on NSC India. Another example will be Indo Trading, which was founded in 2015 and it is now Indonesia's largest marketplace with 70,000 local companies on board the platform. So uh, while you, you can see that all these countries throughout Southeast Asia, they are now relying on their nation-specific uh, marketplaces. Why is this concept growing in popularity? It's because when you have a local uh, market, B2B marketplace to connect the local ecosystem, you actually give more confidence to your customers and also potential investors that are looking into investing into Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, okay. Uh, maybe one, just one last uh, wrap up uh, before I move on to, to Marvin. You've got any, uh, anything to, to add on, uh, Pamela? Yeah. So, uh, like what I, uh, in a summary, just in summary, like what I shared today, uh, you need to put in your effort in digital marketing in order to succeed. Do not be discouraged when you don't see the immediate results. Keep going continue learning the tricks of electronic marketing, you will get there one day. Okay, thanks, uh, you know, for, for that uh, interesting uh, uh, and also, uh, you know, uh, very penetrating advice from, from uh, Pamela Everest. Now that we've heard from, you know, an SME exporter, we have also, uh, you know, uh, heard from uh, the, uh, someone who's been running a B2B uh, marketplace platform. Which is so one is more on, on the on the front end, which is the marketing side. Now we'll go to the the back end, which I think uh, Stephanie mentioned uh, initially earlier about the importance of uh, logistics, getting the right logistics uh, partner as one of the challenges of exporting. So our our third panelist or final panelist is uh, Marvin Yi. Marvin is the uh, CEO of. Uh, GoFreights.com, which is basically a digital one-stop freight management platform that was developed with uh, SMEs in mind. I think they, they offer uh, the whole work setting from, from A to Z in terms of a one-stop solution for, for freight management. 
So without further ado, let me call upon uh, Marvin to, to, to share with us. So hi Marvin, how are you this morning? Yeah. Hey, good morning. Thank you, Joe, and uh, the team from MDEC for organizing this uh, event um, to help these uh, SMEs to digitize their businesses. And uh, thank you for having me. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay, let's let's plunge right in because then we'll have uh, more questions for to to pick up for the uh, the Q and A later on. Share with us, uh, you know, again, like, uh, why do you think? See, like, you know, traditionally. SMEs have been depending on their so-called, uh, you know, uh, freight forwarders, logistics suppliers, whole works, you know. How would a digital one-stop uh, freight management platform come into the picture to facilitate the uh, export process? Okay, um, first of all, let's start by introducing uh, GoFreight. Um, GoFreight is a digital freight uh, managing platform. That means we help uh, companies such as uh, SMEs to ship the products that um, from where they are made to where they are ultimately sold. Uh, it can be okay. domestically or even uh, internationally. So uh, what we do, uh, we help these companies to thrive and uh, uh, allow them to manage the complexity of getting things uh, all over the world uh, to deliver to their customers all from one single dashboard. So um, we are also helping the retail legacy companies um, and uh, manufacturers to deal with all the uh, disruptions. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we know for a fact, right, that uh, most of these uh, uh, manufacturers actually sell a lot of their products through middlemen, uh, who are the ones who actually handle all the logistics for the goods. And then um, they make a profit from the trade. But now uh, the new trend, you know, uh, companies and e-commerce are trying to reshape the uh, businesses by going, uh, cutting out the middlemen and going directly to the manufacturers. So what we did was uh, we developed this platform to fill that gap, you know, uh, by connecting the manufacturers, the importers, the exporters, the, the, the trucking companies, uh, ocean carriers, airlines, basically connecting all the stakeholders to get business done uh, domestically and globally. So we are not just a freight forwarding platform, we are actually a partner, a business partner for SMEs. Okay, hmm, interesting. So actually you bring all this logistics uh, stakeholders into, into, into one platform, which is integrated. So it's easier for the SMEs, right? And then also it saves costs for the SMEs basically, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah, you're right. Yeah. So, okay, uh, you know, like if I'm an SME uh, exporter today, you know, uh, or manufacturer. Um, probably I'll be asking is like, uh, what's what's so unique? What's the USP for your for your e freight management platform? You know, I mean, uh, in the past I just call up my logistics guy, and you know, and the guy will take care of everything. So how are you different? You know, I mean, and, and what what do you bring to the to the table? You know, in terms of mm -hmm. uh, your benefits or, or your advantages. Okay, um, historically, right, uh, SMEs are actually at the mercy of their freight. Uh, agent or freight broker, you know, um, businesses care a lot about their costs. You know, that's why freight industry only focus on costs uh, historically. So uh, at Go Freight, we were thinking, let's look at other factors. For example, the reliability, uh, the transit time, and uh, the predictability. You know, and how it can affect uh, these uh, SMEs' growth. So we, uh, but uh, we want our users to know, you know, uh, their cargo is with good hands. So we partner with very, very credible and reliable global uh, freight partners. So to and to make sure that the goods are moved and delivered safely um, to the rightful owners uh, all across the world, and we are uh, and our shipments are all fully insured by our insurance partner Zurich International. So um, the SMEs do not need to go Google and look for you know, marine, marine, marine insurance or air insurance, uh, all covered on our platform. So uh, we use uh, our tech to automate a lot of the process and uh, to reduce the depend uh, dependency on uh, paperwork. Uh, for a start, our users will only need to input the basic information um, such as the mode of uh, transportation, the uh, delivery and um, pickup addresses, and then the details of the cargo. They only input once, and we will, our platform will actually guide them along the way uh, to the documentations required for custom clearance. So this way, um, even newly formed companies you know, with no experience on freight can export almost immediately, maybe uh, even on uh, Monday or uh, Tuesday. 
So another point that we understand, um, the time factor uh, plays a huge role in the success of the company. So our platform allows our users to uh, basically view and uh, retrieve all the information such as the costings, uh, billings, and um, we have an option for them to generate reports for cost management uh, at a click of a mouse. So no more flipping through piles of papers or going through emails, you know, to get and compile all these uh, required information. So through our platform, it's a lot faster. Okay. Uh, lastly, uh, with GoFreight, uh, our users will have better visibility of their shipment because we integrate with global uh, tracking providers to provide our users uh, geographical, real-time tracking of their shipments anywhere in the yeah. world by air or sea. So it's similar to how you track your parcel uh, through Grab or Lala Move, you know, but it's for air and sea. So mm -hmm. we give both the exporter and importer the experience of knowing the milestone, you know, um, okay. knowing where their goods are uh, yeah. even, uh, in tran during transit. Okay. I was actually going to ask you about uh, the real-time tracking, but you've answered that. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, that's one okay. of our main uh, uh, unique uh, selling proposition because uh, yeah. we are one of the uh, only uh, digital freight platform that uh, has that, that okay. type of uh, uh, system. Wonderful, yeah. Okay, the, the next thing is because I think I, I understand you also, uh, well, I mean, your platform also provides uh, warehousing facilities, uh, you know, I guess with certain providers and things like that. Uh, from my own uh, experience, that we find that uh, when it comes to uh, uh, e-commerce, uh, you know, uh, sometimes this is, well, this is, this is where the back-end fulfillment comes in, you know, at times. Uh, so, so how do you support, uh, you know, say an SME with your so-called warehousing facilities? Okay, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we partner with very credible and reliable freight partners. So the network um, stretches across the globe. Um, if we put together all the assets that they have, we are looking at uh, more than 400 assets that we can utilize. So including the short-term to long-term uh, warehousing. But just to be clear, um, we manage freight for B2B companies. So when we talk about fulfillment, we are not talking about parcels. Uh, yeah. We are talking about cargoes, you know, uh, right, things that right, one right. man can't carry. That's you know? right, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we have customers who actually ship their products to other countries, then stored in the warehousing uh, and yes. in the warehouses, and then uh, shipped out uh, upon uh, order. We do have that uh, capability, but um, uh, domestically and internationally, but Mostly local for now uh, because uh, okay. we are quite a very we are a very new startup company. Okay, uh, maybe just uh, one last uh, comment from you. Um, in terms of uh, how do you address? Uh, I think you've talked a bit about that now, you know. But just just to wrap up, like you know, the pain points because your your one stop solution. How do you address the pain points for for an SME exporter? You know. So just a quick one from you before we, we go into the, uh, the Q&A session, because I'm sure there'll be people uh, who have already posted some questions and we'll try to, to answer and address those questions. Yeah. Okay, uh, so uh, freight forwarding is um, very different. It's unlike any other industries. Um, there's no one company big enough to handle the entire network on its own. So um, actually it's a global network of freight forwarders handling, uh, handling uh, cargo from one point to another. And no companies have that kind of access. So if they're not a fat folder, but even if they have, they won't be able to manage the, uh, the entire complexity on their own. So freight is actually like a relay race um, where the cargo is picked up from a warehouse uh, by a truck and then uh, moved to another location, uh, a port for clearance, then handed over to another carrier, then being carried across the globe to another port and then uh, another round of custom clearance uh, before loading onto another truck and sent to the destination. So it's really not that simple at all. So what we did was we automate the entire process using our platform and the user only needs to input the information and we will guide them along the way. Um, okay. So uh, when we talk about freight forwarding, we are also flying sheets of paper to another country. Uh, what happens is these sheets of paper will tell the customs who the new owners are. So the information must be accurate, uh, as accurate as possible, uh, or there will be hefty fines uh, due to errors. Um, 
Errors alone cost billions of dollars, to be honest, um, usually from wrong declaration of goods, uh, incorrect dimensions or weights, or bad shipping addresses. So uh, we can avoid that uh, entirely by allowing the exporter to input the information, and then we cross-check uh, okay. the documents uh, yeah. from the, uh, they, that they uploaded on to our platform. So everything is uh, being uh, managed by our platform. So okay. exporters... Fine. Ex, um, exporters like what uh, Stephanie said, you, know, you need a reliable freight forwarder. You, yeah. know? Uh, you need someone I, I, to actually yeah, uh, so, uh, be able to... Sorry Marvin, I, I have to... Uh, you could do just uh, sum up uh, you know, uh, quickly yeah, because sure, I, sure. I, 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 we don't have much time and I would like to go to the Q&A uh, session. Yeah. 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 Okay, so, okay. Um, okay, so uh, to summarize, uh, our ultimate goal is actually to make freight forwarding simple and accessible to all companies, especially the SMEs in Malaysia. So not only uh, not every company uh, can afford logistics department, especially during times like this. So we spent the last three years from idea to concept to finally uh, developing this uh, tech, and then uh, to okay. successfully remove uh, most of the tedious processes and paperwork. So giving uh, our SMEs the luxury of moving goods to anywhere in the world uh, by simply input, book, and track. That's our philosophy. Okay, thanks, thanks, Marvin, and yeah. uh, you know. Let us now uh, move on to the final part of our panel uh, session, which I always think is the, uh, the most exciting part because this comes from the, the audience. I see a few uh, Q&A questions. Uh, a couple of them are sort of connected. Uh, you know, uh, I think I'll, I'll basically address this to, uh, to Pamela. The question is, can you export F and B products on a B two B platform like Everest? Because they notice the that most of the products they see are machineries, materials. Yeah. yeah. Yo. Mike. All right. Sorry, I just unmuted. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that one of our key top industry and key strengths would be on machineries and you know. Uh, industrial materials, but we do have sellers uh, that are also selling uh, healthy beverages, uh, supplements on our on our platform, reaching out to you know uh, wholesalers or distributors. So, uh, but if let's say you are targeting consumer, then I would say that definitely you go for Lazada or Shopee. But if you are looking for wholesalers, distributors, there's no harm trying Everest or even Samantha online. Uh, when we develop Everest, we were actually mainly targeting uh, the industrial engineering uh, industry. But uh, due to some of our sellers uh, feeding back that you know they would like to try with F&B, we also opened the consumer uh, segment. But uh, currently, that is not our top industry. But I would say that if you are selling F and B, you can give it a try on Samantha online. Okay, thanks. I think uh, the uh, the other question is also related to to food products. I think she was asking because they are they are selling uh, water lentils, uh, protein powder. So again, I think. Uh, uh, F and B products on on a B two B platform, which you have actually uh, answered to some extent. Okay. Uh, then the other question is to do with uh, evaluating the uh, the success of a digital uh, expo. What will be the, some of the measurement tools that you can use to evaluate? Uh, I guess uh, either you or Stephanie can also answer that. For the digital expo, uh, definitely one of the key metrics that we will be looking at would be in terms of how many traffics we will be able to drive in during the digital expo period. And just to share, uh, we, uh, Everest and Samantha are in partnership to drive this digital expo, but not now yet, because what we need is we need to have the crowd before we are able to launch an uh, expo. You know, without uh, sufficient sellers, we definitely will not be able to drive enough uh, visitors to view your products. So, uh, one of the key metrics would be uh, what is the uh, amount of traffic that is coming into the website. And in order to drive this traffic, we actually have plans for Samantha to actually work together with MDEC and Matrix as well, you know, to help us promote this digital expo to overseas customers and visitors. Mm. Okay. Uh, Stephanie, uh, would you like to add uh, how do you... 
how would you consider if let's say a particular particular digital expo is considered to be uh, successful you know how would you measure the success yeah. I think there are few uh, exhibition organizers in our world uh, as a listener today, okay? So one of my best friends, Bing Pong, is inside in uh, this uh, webinar, okay? So if, let's say you are going to Digital Expo, the uh, organizer's uh, platform must be very good in uh, customer's uh, record and tracking. This is what I think, okay? So they must have the uh, on-time uh, uh, inquiry feedback to the uh, exhibitor uh, at the first hand. This is what I think. So if, let's say from there, without time wasted, like uh, what Mr. Yu always quoted, time is crucial, golden to us. So from there, you grab your, uh, to evaluate your success in the exhibition. But very important that for SME, we are all the bosses and we all also the employee and we also are the backer, okay? So those uh, exhibition, like you go to internal exhibition, Please do it yourself. This is what I think. This is so far that so many years I have stopped and I'm still keep going up. So uh, this is why I can see your key success after the digital expo. Follow up, close sales is very important and the relationship with your customer also important. And the way attending, how you talk to your customer also very important. This is okay. the customization. Okay, thank, thanks, Stephanie. Yeah. I'll take the next question, but this one is more for, for Everest. It's like, uh, how does your platform work? I think we've already explained that to, to, to some extent. Uh, any charges? I guess it's always the dollars and cents. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, we, do, we do have charges. Uh, currently, our packages starts from 200 ringgit per year. You may uh, visit our website, www.everest.com.my. There's a button, packages and pricing. You can check out our pricing there. Okay. Uh, okay, fine. Yeah. There's another okay. question. Yeah. Hey, yo, you, you see yes. the, basically all the uh, uh, 11 or 12 questions, they are asking more on their uh, products that uh, what there are many types of different category products that are going to post into some and talk. Yeah, we have uh, actually, we, we, this is the, uh, thanks, thanks for, I'm, I'm actually going to address the, you know, these questions. Yeah. But for me, for me, that uh, under the, uh, what we say, well, based on my understanding from the Samantha online, because I'm already on uh, what we say last two days, because of before this uh, 6th of May, this uh, webinar, I have to do it myself on the uh, product posting. So the uh, Samantha online, uh, this, uh, what we say, the platform they are redesigned for is it's very easy for the layman. So whatever products that you mentioned, FMB, you're doing what the uh, Babington's products or any yep, what we yep. say sport products uh, or fishing product, whatever you just post it. But very important, your meta keyword very important. That's all. And how you emphasize your products and the price range you must put it uh, very clear. And you need to understand the uh, what we say others uh, sellers pricing as well before you yep. do all this. Okay. Uh, thanks. Thanks, uh, uh, Stephanie, for for taking those questions so that it. it it takes away my burden because I was about to answer those. <laughs> so as what uh, Stephanie said is that uh, for for either Samantha Online or, or you know even Everest, I think it can be any product that you can uh, post. Uh, you know what I mean? Because like so whether it's badminton related products or or F and B, as long as you can ship it, and if the other country allows you to 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 ship it there, then uh, you know uh, you can you can actually. Uh, uh, post and upload your products uh, on the digital uh, platform because the rest of it depends on on you and the buyer eventually you know because this this platform is just for you to promote your products to showcase your products and uh, you know we, we hope to have of course more and more uh, suppliers so that uh, when when the uh, when the pool of suppliers is enhanced it expands then I think then we will also be able to attract more buyers to come on board you know because it's actually a chicken and egg thing as well, you know. So if they know that there's a dedicated uh, nation-specific platform, then we can then promote this, like, you know, with the help of Mar Trade, you know, to, to all these uh, international organizations and buyers all over the world, so that when, when there are international buyers or buying houses looking for Malaysian sellers, then they know where to go. They can come straight to this kind of digital platforms, yeah. Okay, um, I think uh, we are coming to the, maybe we'll take one last question, if any, 
Uh, I think we've answered uh, practically all the questions here. Um, Yo, what I'll do is that. Sorry. Yo, uh, do you want to uh, talk about a little bit about the grant? Because uh, a lot of SME bosses are. No, I think I think the yeah I think the because like uh, yeah we can we can talk a little bit about the the grant uh, maybe Pamela you can you can share with us about uh, you know say for those SMEs um, I think who want we to don't go. have time for that Mr. Ah, okay. so we can interrupt. Okay. it's all right it's all right yeah okay yeah, so I think well before before I just conclude is that let me take this opportunity first of all to thank everyone the audience for being with us for this. Uh, one hourly session. We hope that you find this uh, panel discussion very informative, uh, useful, and, and interesting. Uh, sorry if we can't answer all. I think we've tried to tackle as many as we can. And then uh, before we go, also let me take this uh, opportunity to thank the, uh, the three panel speakers, the two lovely ladies, as well as uh, Marvin, who is the odd one out here. Well, I guess he has me, you know, so, so that's sort of a balance. Uh, yeah. So thank you very much again to, to MDAC for giving us this opportunity to participate in this, uh, you know, this GDAX, uh, sorry, uh, EDX, EDX uh, uh, festival. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> All right. Over to you, Jun. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Mr. Yeo. And thank you also to the rest of the panelists. That was really great. I hope our audience gained a lot of benefits from it. I have a few announcements here to make for our audience. We have a survey form to we will display it after the end of this webinar. So if you're interested in their program, please fill in your details. Also, um, this webinar will be, uh, the recording of this webinar will be uploaded to Go e-commerce portal. Please register at www.go-ecommerce.my to gain access once it's available. And also, since this is our B2B audience, we are going to have a webinar at 3 p.m. Uh, also cater to B2B audience uh, the, it is about how to export prepacked food to China. So stay tuned and be sure to be with us at 3 p.m. I think with that, we end this session. Um, we'll be right back at 12 p.m. with Shopline. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay. <laughs> so we are offline now, right? Yeah. <laughs>